The Matthew Small Business Broadcast spotlights urban business owners, professionals, and creative artists and enables them to share their products and services with urban consumers from New York City to Washington, D.C., who have more than $150 billion of annual purchasing power. So book your spotlight interview package right now and let us help you acquire the new clients you need to prosper and succeed. Call us at 732-357-5701. Hi, this is Stan Matthews, founder of the Matthews Broadcast Network. It takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a community to build healthy, wealthy businesses, professional practices, and nonprofit organizations. The Matthews Broadcast Network enables urban businesses, professionals, creative artists, and community organizations to affordably share their products and services on network TV, digital, and social media platforms, and provides urban consumers like you the opportunity to support and help these businesses, professionals, creative artists, and community-based organizations create jobs, provide career opportunities, and make urban communities great places to live, work, and raise a family. So please become a network supporter at www.thematthewsbroadcast.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can continue to spotlight and share the success stories, positive outlook, people, culture, and awesome destiny of the global urban community. Hi, I'm Mayor Baraka of Newark, reminding you to shop urban and shop local to save time and money, get a higher level of customer service, create jobs, and build stronger families and communities. Remember to shop urban, shop local, and shop Newark. Remember to shop urban, shop local, and shop Newark. Good evening, I'm Stan Matthews, and welcome to the Dream Life broadcast. Uh, we are very, very happy to be at GEMS TV Studios uh, here in Northern Jersey. For all of you in the New York, New Jersey market, uh, you know um, our uh, history. We got our start right here at GEMS TV and GEMS Radio, and are so happy to be back home uh, here in the Northern Jersey area. Uh, the Dream Life broadcast has but one purpose. Uh, it is to help you to live your dream life by sharing with you the success secrets of highly successful people um, so that you can live your dream life now. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. to the Dream Life broadcast, and we'll be glad to show you how. Uh, the Dream Life broadcast broadcast from four locations, one for the New York, New Jersey market, Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. here from GEMS TV, uh, Central Jersey from Access, New Jersey, on Tuesday nights from Piscataway, P-Way, as my son says, um, and Tuesday from the capital, the nation's capital, where we'll be tomorrow at eLife Studios in Capitol Heights, Maryland, and then in the fourth week of each month, from AEI Startup Factory, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. And so those are the four locations where the, where the Dream Life broadcast comes from. And we are just very, very happy, it's static in fact, uh, to be with you this evening uh, to share with you some success secrets and some leadership thoughts and skills that you might want to incorporate. Uh, so if you've ever wanted to be an author, you're going to love uh, our next guest. If you ever had a thought about how the nation's economy works and what works well and what works not so well, you would want to know my friend to my right. Uh, he is a professor of economics. Uh, he is a successful author. I'm proud to call him friend. He's the one and only Murray Sabrin. And Murray, welcome to the Dream Life broadcast this evening. Uh, we are so glad to have you. Um, you have a new book out, but before talking about your book, why don't you share with the Matthews broadcast audience um, your many years um, as an academic, mm -hmm. uh, your passion for um, things um, in the economy and the economy uh, writ large, and how everyday Americans can understand the nation's economy. So give us your background sure. uh, for a few minutes, and then we'll get right into uh, this wonderful work that you just birthed. 
Well, uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, Stan. It's always a pleasure being Same. with you and um, getting good information to your listeners all over the metropolitan region. Um, I'm a faculty member teaching finance at Ramapo College in the business school. I've, uh, I'm in my 35th year and last year. year. I'll be retiring at the end of this year. And I'll be giving my farewell address uh, next week at the Rossiti Memorial I Lecture. I will be there. Uh, what building in the, at, at Ramapo College? That'll be, that'll be in the Trustees Pavilion at uh, 7.30. I'll be giving the address 6.30. We're going to have a book signing for the book that we'll be talk, uh, mm -hmm. talking about in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching there in 1985. I have a PhD from Rutgers, a master's in uh, social studies education from Lehman College, mm -hmm. and an undergraduate degree in history and geography and social studies education. Uh, my talk is going to be about the next 70 years in America, the economy, the uh, political situation, the social situation that we're going to have in America that I think is unfolding before our eyes. Now, why am I going to talk about the next 70 years? Well, this past August is the 70th anniversary of my coming to America with my older brother and right. parents. Right. They were the only ones who survived World War II in their native Poland. And we came to America to uh, live the American dream in order to uh, talk about, in order to live the life that uh, uh, America promised to immigrants uh, from day one that the country was founded. And so uh, I've been fortunate to uh, go to school, get, a, get the degrees that would allow me to become an academic, uh, which I've had a wonderful career at Ramapo College. And uh, my goal as being an academic is to write about issues that affect the average person, whether it's on personal finance, whether it's about the big economic picture for the U.S. economy, uh, whether talking about uh, some, some of the major issues uh, besides economics and finance. I'm a big believer in civil liberties. I've, uh, since I'm a naturalized citizen, I became a U.S. citizen in 1959. I raised my right hand and um, promised, swore to uphold the Constitution. So I deeply believe in the Bill of Rights that protects every American, no matter what status they are, no matter what background they have, that they're entitled to all the rights uh, that are guaranteed to us by the Constitution. I'm also a passionate believer in peace. Since I grew up listening, uh, asking my parents questions about World War II, I think it's important that we live in a peaceful world so we don't have a repeat of what happened during World War II where people were wantonly killed all over the world and before that uh, in World War I and we had genocides in Africa and Asia and other parts of the world. So I'm a big defender of peaceful relations with uh, all countries Everyone. around the world so we can have commerce. Commerce is the lifeblood of the world economy and if we have peace and commerce, we will have prosperity that the world has never seen before. That's a, that's and that's a great thought. Um, it, it speaks to uh, your desire for this country. It speaks to my desire for this country. All of us want a better quality of life for Americans uh, and a more harmonious mm -hmm. uh, community uh, for all of us. We are here for a short time. We all have to ch share uh, this little planet mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, nation, um, and hopefully working together in Absolutely. a collaborative way. Uh, pooling all of our collective wisdom, we can uh, make America greater for the next generation. Well, that's what I've been writing about for decades, <laughs> namely the free market is the vehicle in which we can do this, is mm -hmm. not having a heavy hand of government with trickle-down economics. What we need is a free enterprise economy. That's why my wife and I founded the Sabrin Center for Free Enterprise at Ramapo College, so we would be an educational vehicle for students, uh, staff, faculty, the general public, to learn about the free enterprise system and not the crony capitalism that we have today, which is pitting uh, region against region, uh, income groups against income groups, racial groups against racial groups, ethnic groups against ethnic groups. That's not harmonious. What we need to do is have a system where people work together through the free market, where no matter what your ability is, you will achieve success as long as you are peaceful, you are entrepreneurial, or if you're not entrepreneurial, you're successful in, in the job market because you have a career like I've had and my colleagues have had at the college. So that's what I think America should be all about is people fulfilling their potential as human beings. And the only way we can do that is in a system of freedom. In fact, our state motto explains that. It's called liberty and prosperity. If you have liberty, you're going to have prosperity. And prosperity and liberty are really joined at the hip. They're two sides of the same coin human civilization that is moving forward for all peoples. I agree with you entirely, Murray. And in fact, you know, I think, uh, you know, this, uh, we've often been called a melting pot. 
I don't necessarily subscribe to a melting pot concept. Uh, my concept is the salad bowl. Why the salad bowl? Because in the salad bowl, right, you have a lot of different things that are good for you that all keep their same property and identity. So the lettuce doesn't want to be the onions and the onions doesn't want to be the broccoli and the broccoli doesn't want to be the croutons and the croutons doesn't want to be the cheese, right? They all keep their own distinct nature and you put them all together and you have something wonderful, right? And so we have uh, one race, in my opinion, in this world. God created the human race, right? The environment, right, means that some of us look differently, right? So most of the people who are learned in the uh, field of anthropology tell me that this stuff, right, is phenotype. It's 3% of us, right? So skin is 3%. The other 97% underneath mm. this kid is the same, right? So we've got to find ways to look beyond. But there are people who profit from differences. Sure. Sure. Um, and they even magnify differences so that they, they can have control and they can get their way. Uh, but I agree with Murray entirely. This free market is the greatest instrument for wealth development uh, ever created. And we have the most powerful economy in the world, 19 trillion plus. And so what we want to try and do, what Murray tries to do, is show everyone how they can make a contribution in mm -hmm. this market and be able to extract for themselves and their family you, some return. I really like your <laughs> salad analogy. You know why? Because mm -hmm. that is the essence of the marketplace, the division of labor. Mm -hmm. So all the things in the salad have good properties that benefit your health. And if people mm -hmm. enjoy this or use the skills that they have, they are going to make the economy prospers. And, and each retain their own individual, uh, 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 unique nature. Uh, so we're going to get uh, right into it. But first, I would like to say to all of my viewers uh, that the Matthews Broadcast Network is independent media. What does that mean? That means that what we shape here in the Dream Life broadcast is entirely for your benefit. It's entirely to help people in our communities, wherever they are, to learn from people like Murray that they may not be able to meet in their lifetime. But through this media platform here at GEMS TV Studios, you'll be able to, to hear and learn from people who have achieved what he has achieved in 35 years as an academic and a very respected member uh, of the academic community and been successful in his own right. And you're going to hear things tonight that's going to pique your interest. Now, how can you help the Matthews broadcast? By being a network supporter. And what does that mean? We ask you to make a contribution of $49 annually once a year. That's roughly $4 a month. And what we give you in return is one of our branded coffee mugs and our quarterly business news journal, which will share with you business owners in your community, professionals in your community who are doing great things and who are contributing to the quality of life in the community. If you want to be our partner, you can go to the MatthewsBroadcast.com, that's Matthews with two T's, and just become a network supporter. Believe me, your friendship and your support matters. So with that said, uh, Murray, I want you to talk about your latest work, um, and share with the audience why the Federal Reserve sucks. Well, <laughs> this book was written while I was on sabbatical. The book was written uh, in the spring of 2017, and it was um, uh, edited uh, along the way, and it came out this summer. And the title is really to get your attention. Why does the Federal Reserve suck? What does uh, it mean? It means the Federal Reserve is counterproductive. It doesn't achieve it, the goals it's set out to achieve, when it was created in 1913, and basically it was created by the bankers for the bankers so they could have protection from their flawed business model, which is we all know that they borrow short and lend long. If everyone remembers the movie It's a Wonderful Life where there's a bank run, now banking is the only institution where people can literally bankrupt a business by getting back their property, and that's what uh, happened at the end of It's a Wonderful Life. Having said that, what I point out in the book is that the Federal Reserve missed the dot-com bubble and missed the housing bubble 
which caused so much pain, especially the housing bubble in the United States where people lost their homes because they overextended themselves. They bought too much house for their income and the banks and the, uh, and the federal government allowed this to happen when they should have said to people, no, you cannot borrow because you don't have enough earning power in order to buy a four or $500,000 house. So that's having said that, we are now in the everything bubble where everything's inflated, housing, um, uh, commercial real estate, uh, stock market prices, bond prices, uh, artwork. And so this is a reflection of what the Federal Reserve does. It has a monopoly on creating new money. And when you create new money, it lifts prices to greater than their market value. And eventually they have to come down to reality. And that's what happened in the 1920s. And we had the crash of 29. This is the 90th anniversary of that crash. And then unfortunately, policy mistakes were made by both President Hoover and Roosevelt. And so what, it should, have, what should have been a steep, quick downturn lasted for a full 12 years in the 1930s. And this was a horrible period in American history where unemployment reached 25%, some communities unemployment reached 40, 50%. And it was a very painful period to go through if, you, if people lived through it. And so unfortunately, we are on the brink of another downturn, whether the downturn happens this year or next year, no one knows for sure, but it's certainly coming because we had an, uh, an inflated economy during the 90s, during the dot-com bubble, and inflated economies during the 2000s that gave us the housing bubble. And now we have another inflated economy, which should end in a correction, a recession uh, in, the ninth, in the 2020s. So uh, all I do is watch the data, see when it uh, will happen, and the key for me is if inflation starts to accelerate, price inflation starts to accelerate, that's when the Federal Reserve will say, okay, we made a mistake. We're not, we're going to create less money. In fact, we'll withdraw money from the economy. And that will cause a correction in the stock market, the bond market, the real estate market. And unfortunately, a lot of people will lose their jobs as they did during the housing bubble where unemployment reached nearly 11%. And some communities, unemployment reached 20%. So on a personal finance basis, I tell people it's very important to have at least six months or a year of living expenses in reserves in your bank. So in case you do get laid off, you will have the means to weather that storm plus your unemployment insurance. You're listening to a man who spent 35 years of his life studying the economy, has written about it uh, many times, he will be giving a farewell lecture at Ramapo College this next Thursday. It's October th uh, Wednesday, October 30th, Wednesday. Wednesday, October 30th, I will be there. And look, Murray has a perspective and a very unique perspective. You may have another perspective, but here's what we say to you on the Dream Life broadcast. We are going to bring leaders who have a perspective that has made them successful, and we want you to listen to them and judge for yourself. But you have to have an open mind in order for you to be able to make wise decisions. There are two types of people that I meet every single day. There are people who are influenced and their behavior is according to what certain parties who have dominance in the economy mm -hmm. want them to believe. Sure. And there are people who respond to information and make their own judgments. Uh, if you don't think you're influenced, right, you need to look again. There is a media, and I'm part of it, who has messages that you receive all the time to cause you to behave in a certain way, right? And so you want to respond to information and wisdom in a way that makes sense to you. You don't want to be influenced, but you need to keep your mind open because as I said earlier, every eight to 10 years since 1892, something has happened, mm -hmm. right? Something that's happened that has had people in bread lines, has had people to lose their homes, we all lived through 2008 when many people became renters instead of owners as a consequence of not paying attention to wisdom uh, that comes from people like Murray Sabrin. So Murray, as we wrap up, I just want to ask you again, where can people get the book? The book's available on Amazon. Uh, just Google uh, the book title, Why the Federal Reserve Sucks, or my name, and the book will come up. And uh, you can get the book uh, next uh, Wednesday night at the... Um, Trustees Pavilion at Ramapo College in Mawa, New Jersey. The book will be selling at a deep discount from the uh, Amazon price. And I'll, they'll be giving a lecture on where I think the economy is going, where the political system is going, where the social conditions are going, 
over the next 70 years because uh, this year is the 70th anniversary of coming to America. So I'll give a, a retrospective on the past 70 years. And if the past is prologue to the future, then what are the trends in motion today that are going to affect the American people over the next 70 years? So I hope you can join us. Uh, Stan uh, is going to be there. I will definitely And I look be forward there. to uh, answering your questions. And um, uh, I think America is going to have a very, the American people will have a very great 21st century as long as we follow the principles of free enterprise and uh, limited government and protecting people's civil liberties. Murray, thank you so much for thank joining you, us. We'll see you next Wednesday, the 30th. You stay tuned to the Dream Life broadcast. We will be back with Mr. Alonzo J. Haran Jr., who is an independent filmmaker whose films focus on the brick city. Uh, so uplifting, inspiring. He's doing the Tyler Perry thing right in Newark, New Jersey, and he's premiering his new movie, The Fearless 2, on Thursday at the Newark Cinemaplex. We'll be joined uh, by my friend, the great filmmaker, Mr. Alonzo Haran Jr., in the next segment of the Dream Life broadcast. This is Stan Matthews. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. From looking at some of the reports that are coming in, uh, Newark now is undergoing a development renaissance in which Mayor Baraka has been able to attract to the city almost two and a half billion dollars of new investment in businesses that are bringing their national headquarters like Audible, other businesses that are coming uh, like Mitsubishi and others uh, into the city. And so kudos to you, uh, Mayor Baraka, continue to do what you're doing. But we also have our eyes on leaders. As I said, the Dream Life broadcast has one objective, to help you live your dream life right now by enabling you to learn from leaders like Alonzo so they can show you how. So if you are a young person and you want to be a filmmaker, if you're a young person and you want to be a director or a producer, listen very closely to what you're about to hear. Alonzo, welcome this evening to the Dream Life broadcast. It's a pleasure. You've always supported the Matthews Broadcast Network. We thank you for that. We're friends, we're colleagues. And so what we want to do right now is we want to pack the house on Thursday night. Tell us Give us a little bit of background. When did you decide that you were going to be an independent filmmaker? Um, I got into the film business in 2012. Uh, I wrote two books um, in 2011. My first book was called Living With No Regrets. And because of the story that I was um, I put out there, uh, people have read it and say you could turn this into a, you know, turn into a film play, screenplay. So I uh, hired a uh, script writer and you know, taught the uh, a production company and pretty much just told them my vision, the way I want to do things. So we decided, you know, to, to go ahead and shoot. I took some money that I made from some real estate um, investments and pretty much just believed in myself and believed in the project. Um, even though I was told there's money is out there for, mm -hmm. and there's grant money, but I just didn't come across any at the time. So I'm a firm believer, always been a believer that if you believe in your own product then invest into your product before you can ask somebody else to invest in you. So I took the chance to roll the dice, shot the film. Um, it, it wasn't the best, but you know, we had a couple of names attached to it. And I think on the budget that we, we shot it for, it, it was good. It's still, you know, even today, my first movie still um, getting a lot of recognition out there. Well, I'm a cheerleader and a promoter and a storyteller at heart. What was the name of that first film? Uh, Living With No Regrets. Some of the names that were in it. I know them, but I want the folks. <laughs> uh, we had um, Clifton Powell in it. We had um, Mark John Jeffries. We had um, J.D. Williams. We had um, one of the hip-hop artists, Maino, um, Tretch, played in it. We had Charlie Baltimore. We had Vita. You know, we had a couple of people. You know, I, I, I got kind of crazy with just trying to bring, you know, a little, little talent into the game. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that you did. Um, why do you focus on the Brick City? Um, Stories from the Brick City. Why is that like close to your heart? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I really don't like the word Brick City. All right. I love Newark. All right. I love right. Newark. I was, um, like I said, I was born and raised in Newark. Uh, my family background come from Dayton Street Projects. Then when the, the projects closed down, we moved over to Stephen Crane Village. Mm -hmm. A lot of my best memories are in Newark, or from Newark. 
I mean, even though, you know, there's a lot of change, North has come a long way. If we could change the, the, the process of the people, then it could be the greatest city with all the development that's being done here. That's right. That's right. Because you, you can measure development when it reaches the least of these. We know it's going to reach the people who have access. Absolutely. But it's when it's reaching those people at the very bottom and bringing them up that the development is real. And I know that uh, Mayor Baraka is working hard on that. Um, and uh, just have to be honest and give a shout out to uh, the godfather of all of that. Two of them, Kenneth Allen Gibson, the first uh, elected uh, mayor of a major city uh, in the United States of America and the one and only Sharp James, who's yes. a big cheerleader for the city. Uh, there would be no New Jersey Performing Arts Center. There would be no rock if not for Sharp James. And so that continued. Even want to include Mayor Booker in there in making Newark more of uh, a city that was talked about on a national basis as well. And so I'm not picking sides here. I'm saying you just have to say who was involved, and then, of course, Mayor Baraka coming in and just taking it to a whole new level. But you're doing that as well because um, I was just, I was just uh, speaking to a good friend of mine, Ian Chappelle, in Atlanta, and he was telling me that at the unveiling of Tyler Perry Studio, that Tyler Perry Studio, y'all, is 233 acres. His studio is bigger than Paramount, oh. Warner Brothers, and 20th Century Fox Studios combined. 233 acres is how big his studio is. And he didn't do it in Hollywood. He did it in the right. ATL, yeah, in right? Atlanta, absolutely. Because he has love for his city. And Tyler was saying that when he was speaking to Idris Alba, Idris asked him that, Tyler, why Atlanta? He said he just wanted to show that we could do it in our community. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and you're doing the same thing. And it's funny that you said that because I was just on the phone last week with the company that... um. I signed the contract too, and he was like, you know, they asked me for 2020, will I be considering to move out to LA? Mm -hmm. There's, you know, give me, I could use their office, and mm -hmm. I could shoot shoot films out there in their studio. And actually, I declined it last week. I said, wow. you know, I don't need to come to LA to um, shoot projects. I could sh still shoot them in Jersey. Atlanta is another place where I'm planning to start shooting in 2020. So I could go there and shoot films. All I need LA, LA for is just a distribution deal to get it out the places I can't get to. And see, so. and, and see that that's awesome. Um, I, if if you haven't seen a movie from Nollywood called Chief Daddy, let me highly recommend that to you. It is funny. It's dramatic. It is about family, and family is everything to me. And so you've got great movies now coming from Ghana. Mm -hmm. You've got great movies coming from Nigeria. You've got great movies coming from South Africa. You've got great movies coming from Brazil. And what each one of these cases is demonstrating is the talent is dispersed, and we have the talent. You're brilliant at what you do. And look, if you want to be on the left coast, you could do it big there too, but you choose to stay in Newark. I'm not going to use the other term. I'm, I'm going to flow with you tonight. <laughs> Listen, we have... Uh, a, a, a responsibility to shop urban and shop local. I said earlier, between New York City and Atlanta, Georgia, last year, urban folk, you spent $303 billion on everything. You are number one in five categories, although you're only 13% of the U.S. population. You buy more sports apparel than anyone else in the United States of America. You buy more luxury cars than anybody in the United States of America. You buy more fast food than anybody in the United States of America. Unfortunately, I'm going to tell you this one. You also buy more malt liquor than anybody else in the United mm. States of America, right? You put the B in Budweiser, the H in Heineken, and the C in Corona. Final thing you're number one in is movie sales. When Panth Black Panther went global in the first weekend, it did $980 million. We buy more movie tickets than any other population in the country. So I'm saying we, you better make sure you're in the house on Thursday night to watch The Fearless 2. Now, give us a little bit, Alonzo, uh, about what The Fearless 2 story is. Well, The, the Fearless 2 comes from the sequel of The Fearless 1. Um, it's about the continuation of Cody and his girlfriend, Kimberly, as they start their life together. But like I said, there's the rival crew underground fightings that still was going on that Cody tried to stop, but it didn't stop, and Cody's going to do 
whatever he got to do to stop it. It don't. It's it's personal now. This is the, the, the fights. It's personal now. But it's a good story though. It's, um, I I gotta say, out of all the the five projects, this one I am really you know I'm really looking forward to. I'm lo- looking forward to seeing the reaction and people can see how we grew because like I said, doing you know shooting other you know storylines from doing an action film is real difficult. You know. So 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 for my social media people, Nicole Inman, uh, my daughter Jari, and others, I'm I'm gonna give you a little peek into how Alonzo's doing it big. The last premiere we did, I saw the car you got out of. So for uh, all the social media people, what kind of car are you gonna arrive in this time? Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm not I'm not luxury, uh, you know, amused like that. I, I still I, I still have a Mercedes, but. You know that that that's my car. You're the producer, you know? man. Yeah, you yeah, you, you yeah. can have one night to shine, and and I and it was just fun. Uh, the last time we were downtown, we brought all of our friends and family yes. down to his last premiere. We just look forward to Thursday night. Be in Newark for the Fearless Two. Uh, any last thoughts that you would want to share with your audience, uh, with the Newark audience, with all of Essex County and North Jersey yeah, about you know Thursday night? Come in just to have a good time enjoy themselves, and partake in your creative genius. Absolutely. Listen, I just tell everybody, come out this Thursday, October 24th, 7 p.m., 9 p.m. showing. We need your support. We're trying to break the industry. Um, Tell somebody, tag 10 people, listen, I'm going to give you a good night, a nice movie, free after party. We can network, talk about the future. Because it's going down. The Matthew Small Business Broadcast spotlights urban business owners, professionals, and creative artists and enables them to share their products and services with urban consumers from New York City to Washington, D.C., who have more than $150 billion of annual purchasing power. So book your spotlight interview package right now and let us help you acquire the new clients you need to prosper and succeed. Call us at 732-357-5701. Hi, this is Stan Matthews, founder of the Matthews Broadcast Network. It takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a community to build healthy, wealthy businesses, professional practices, and nonprofit organizations. The Matthews Broadcast Network enables urban businesses, professionals, creative artists, and community organizations to affordably share their products and services on network TV, digital, and social media platforms, and provides urban consumers like you the opportunity to support and help these businesses, professionals, creative artists, and community-based organizations create jobs, provide career opportunities, and make urban communities great places to live, work, and raise a family. So please become a network supporter at www.thematthewsbroadcast.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can continue to spotlight and share the success stories, positive outlook, people, culture, and awesome destiny of the global urban community. Hi, I'm Mayor Baraka of Newark, reminding you to shop urban and shop local to save time and money, get a higher level of customer service, create jobs, and build stronger families and communities. Remember to shop urban, shop local, and shop Newark. Remember to shop urban, shop local, and shop Newark.